what I know today is that someone may be dying to hear that someone else has recovered. You know what I mean? And that is, you know, there's nothing when you have that consciousness. You can't go back and go, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go talk about this again. I just want to just let that be over and be done with. And um, with me knowing that uh, I could plant this seed that helped someone discover or rediscover life. Uh, I just can't with good conscience go out and go, oh, well, you know, I'm, I've recovered, I'm done, that's it. You know, uh, they can find their own path or whatever. And making, uh, doing these videos, uh, these interviews, uh, will allow me to reach more people than I could face-to-face one-on-one uh, and who knows, I may, you know, meet folks through um, these videos and you know, we can talk and, you know, go into detail on some of the other uh, ways and methods I've used to recover. But uh, this is just a way to get the story out, get the, uh, get it out to as many people as possible uh, so the healing can begin. You mentioned your poetry and your speaking out. And... In that last answer, you talked about being motivated to do that, but frame it for us a little differently. What keeps you so motivated to be an inspiration? I mean, it's just the miracle, the gratitude that I'm alive. <laughs> I mean, there's not really any big, long, windy, philosophical answer, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I just can't even count the number of times I shouldn't shouldn't be alive. You know, I mean, um, that and um, there's just this knowing that I have uh, a greater purpose to fulfill, and that, uh, and that uh, then I need to be doing something about it. And uh, then I'm not only that I can and that I put the energy towards that goal that uh, God matches me and uh, meets me more than halfway you know, and uh, achieving those things not without the discomfort of uh, being more than I am you know? it's definitely uh, not something that's like oh this is as easy as sitting on the couch watching TV um, after you know the usual long day at work or you know school and, and whatever normal activities um, I just uh, <clears throat> I know that the the uh, traits and everything that uh, I still have as far as my faculties and uh, my abilities uh, that I need to be doing something with those to, in, in kind of in honor of the people that have helped me recover as well as uh, kind of the commitment I made with God that, you know, if you do your part, I'll do my part. You know, I might not do it as well as you do your part, but I'm going to do my part, you know. Uh, and continuing to do my part is um, the rewards are conversations I have with people um, that uh, that inspire me. You know, I mean, there's, uh, there's a young, young lady who's in a uh, She's quadruplegic. She's a member of the uh, non-traditional student organization. I used to be uh, an officer, in, and um, you know, just having conversations with her. I mean, how she, you know, keeps coming up to this university, keeps taking classes, keeps wanting to be better than my, than herself. And you know, I kind of look at myself and go, "Wow," <laughs> and I've got some real good excuses, you know. It's not something I can just deny, but it's it's people like her that you know, uh, people like uh, another uh, another woman that uh, you know raised all three of her children after her husband died, and uh, you know they're all off in college now, and she wanted to be a teacher. So uh, you know, seeing someone come back after you know doing that kind of work and you know, raising children. You know, it's a, a kind of work I don't have any experience with, but uh, I can only imagine, you know, and then coming back and then doing what she had always wanted to do, you know, I mean, 
so I don't know. It's kind of like looking to others for that kind of inspiration, you know, people that uh, can do things that I had not grown into being able to do yet. That attitude of humility that you're expressing 